going to show you the way that I like to pour auger to use for labs. This is the one we use in our laboratory classes when we're able to have them. Auger is a gelatinous substance that comes from red seaweed and it's used as a culture medium and as a thickener in some foods. Uh, some yogurts, ice creams, I don't know what else. In our labs, uh, we use nutrient auger as one of the most common, easy, cheap to get, and it grows a lot of stuff. Bacteria don't break down the auger. It comes in a powder that has to be mixed with water and autoclave, or you can get it pre-mixed, already sterilized, which is what I usually do. Now, when you get ready to melt it, you have to melt it because it's semi-solid. And I like to do it, you can microwave it, but you can get explosions that way. I like to put a hot plate with a beaker on it and put the glass jar in here. But very important to remember, heating a compressed liquid can cause an explosion. So you're going to have to loosen the lids and not just loosen the lids, but tilt them to the side. Now, you can't just take them off because gravity pulls germs down and you don't want anything to fall into the auger and mess up your culture. You'll get the wrong things growing. So we, I tilt them to the side and you see the lady here has a sterilized uh, little tong that she's using to put this sideways because it's hot. Okay. Germs, this is just showing this guy coughs out, and yeah, sure, a lot of the germs go out, a lot of them go down. So our auger, if you are, you know, just germs floating in the air, and there are germs in the air, they're going to go down and get into your culture. If you don't, be very careful, not only with your pouring auger, but uh, with your bottles, but also with your petri dishes. Here see the germs, some fell there and some fell there. So very, that's just germs right there if you can't see it. Okay, and this shows that we've turned it, they've stopped boiling and they're tilted and you can really see what they're doing here. Now you can tell it's melted enough when it changes color, the color will be a more white color and you can also pick it up with a towel or gloves shake it around. If it's got glops in it, it's not cooked down enough. And I'll show it here. Uh, flaming the top of it in case any germs got on the top, which is a good idea to do with the glass ones. With the plastic ones, if you do it, please do it quickly before you melt your glass. Now, She's doing a, she or he, I can't tell who that is, is doing an excellent job here. You see they have the auger, the lid of the auger plate up and being a sneeze guard basically over the auger. They've laid paper towels down on their table because this stuff is really hard to clean up. It turns into a solid when it dries and so you've got this gelatinous goo to clean if you don't lay something down. And he's pouring it into here in perfect, I think it's a he. I'm just going by, there's no nail polish. I'm not wearing any either. And this is showing that they should have had this set, how the arrow here, they should have had this tilted up a bit more. And you want to pour it until it's uh, completely covered the bottom of your auger plate, but you don't want it filled to the top because if it's filled to the top, what happens is it, the top, glues down. Now you always, you know, with your auger plate, the narrow, the smaller piece is the bottom and the top is a larger piece so it covers over. Uh, two millimeters thick, uh, this is maybe I'd say a third full is about right. And here's the person pouring it. Now this would not be enough, it's got to be poured until it's about to this level here. So got, they've got to do a lot more pouring. Let's see, it flows nicely. Okay, once you have them poured, uh, they're still liquid. You can tell by the golden color as opposed to the white color they were originally. 
they're still liquid, but they need to be cold and generally in the lab rather than wait for them to just get cool and then go ahead and spread them. That usually makes a mess. We refrigerate them and I put them on trays and stack them very carefully. Now if you drop the tray that has everyone's auger on it, someone will get mad with you. You put it in the refrigerator. Now, I see a few problems with this picture here. First off, her pants should come down. Well, maybe we should since she has black pants. Well, I guess they're dark blue. We should make they should come down further because you don't want to get germs on your legs. She does have closed toe shoes, so that's good. She also well, she should have eyes. They didn't draw those, but she needs to wear safety goggles. There's her safety goggle around her ear. Aren't I good at drawing? You'll have to guess the other side. Uh, she should have on gloves and she should have on a lab coat. Well, this is a hoodie, but if we could take that and cut this piece off, then it wouldn't be a hoodie. Okay. Now, something to think about, very important. And this is OSHA rule. It's a law. You have to follow this law. You can't do this wrong. You must have absolutely no food in the lab refrigerator. No beverages. I, people always are wanting to put their Coca-Cola in the lab refrigerator. I mean, I got one refrigerator with dead pigs and one refrigerator with bacteria. Uh, no, it's not. It's against the law. And I've been in veterinary clinics where people put their lunch in the same refrigerator that has vaccines. It's illegal. Uh, the vaccines, you know, they're probably safe, but especially since they're animal vaccines, but it's illegal. I have been in um, in clinics where they actually would take somebody would bring in a fecal sample and they'd bring it in and then put their lunch beside it. Now that is over the line, but here's the thing, and I don't know, they may be higher now, but I've heard several people say when they've broken OSHA rules for whatever reason, they get charged $10,000 a day until they get it fixed. Now, if you're the one that screwed it up, chances are you're going to get fired. But there was a hospital, not in Thomaston, and I don't think in Griffin, so you don't know where it was. But they did not have any of their OSHA paperwork, their safety data sheets on their uh, janitorial carts. They didn't have them where their chemicals were. They didn't have anything labeled right, and they did get $10,000 a day fine. So everybody had to work just constantly until they got labels on everything and the right safety data sheets. But I just added that in because I just want you to realize how important. No, you cannot put food in the micro refrigerator. And if you do, it's just gross anyway. Okay, that's all for this one.